Good morning. God bless you on this Tuesday morning. This week, as we go through our three days of devotions, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I'd like to take a look at what the Bible describes as our three great enemies, sin, death, and the power of the devil. And so it may not seem the most uh, inspirational, uh, you know, encouraging, joyful topic, but I think one of the challenges we face as Christians in our day and age is so often in the church, we try to focus on the love of Jesus and the grace of Jesus and give people the security of his love and forgiveness without reminding them that in this life, there are perils that affect us in body and mind and in spirit. And we have three great enemies that wage war against us every day. And whereas I believe that foundation of love and grace and forgiveness is essential to our lives, I know I live and depend on it. I also believe if you send people out into battle and you don't train them and you don't warn them about the enemy, and if you don't spend time teaching them about the enemy's tactics, you're setting them out to be slaughtered. You're sending them out to be, become victims of their own sin, of the destruction of the world around us, and of the devil himself. So I think even though it may not be the most joyful, exciting thing to talk about this week, I think it is absolutely essential. And of course, when the Bible gives that list, it starts with sin. And that's something that's not outside of us. It's something deep within us. And so often when we talk about that word, we talk about it more in terms of the details. What are sins versus what is sin. Sometimes I look at it as, you know, what is sin with a capital S versus sins with a small s? You know, the disease versus the symptoms. And when the Bible talks about sin, it's talking not only about individual acts that are wrong and destructive, it's talking about the condition of our heart. Um, some describe it as the, that sin, the disease that we face, is that deep-seated self-centeredness where at the bottom line of every decision we make, every human interaction that we have, there's this, what's in it for me? I think that's one of the things that is the most tangible sign of sin in our lives and in our world, is that so often every relationship in our life, including our relationship with God, comes down to that sinful distortion of, okay, I'll consider this as long as I can figure out what do I get out of it? How do I benefit from this? You think of how that affects our prayer life and the way we approach our God and our Father, the, the one who gave us life. We think about the way that affects every relationship, whether it's our relationship with our parents or, or our, our relationship with our kids as the roles reverse. When our relationship with our spouse, what's in it for me? And in our culture, that becomes so pervasive that divorce and broken relationships and children writing off their parents and parents writing off their children, so often it's because there's that realization that, you know what, I don't see what's in it for me anymore, therefore you are not worth it and relationships come down to that one fundamental equation of, if I don't see a benefit to myself, it's not worth my time or my energy. The flip side of that might be, well, how much is it going to cost me? You know, many people long to have good relationships. They understand that, you know, yeah, life is better when you're surrounded by people that you enjoy being with. But often when it comes to that question of not only what's in it for me, but the other side of it, what's it going to cost me? People, for the sake of community, for the sake of not being alone, they're willing to pay a certain price, but not too much. And the sin that distorts us, that distorts our relationship, is always measuring, hmm, how much effort am I having to really put into that? And you combine those two together. What's in it for me versus how much is it going to cost me? And all of a sudden you see this is why the world is the way it is. 
from relationships between individual people to relationships between nations and the world at large. You know, those two questions. The other thing about sin living in us, sin as the disease, not so much the symptoms of the disease, is that sin has a way of blinding us and distorting what things that are wrong and things that are evil and destructive. And yet when we get caught up in our sin, in that equation of what's in it for me versus what's, what's at stake and what's it gonna cost me, we all of a sudden stop being able to see the harm that sin causes. I want to read you a couple passages that have to do with this. The, uh, two, the first two are from James. James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. And you hear in James that progression from desires within us. And I don't know if, you, if it works this way in you, but when I get a desire in my heart that is for something that may be innocent by itself, but it's something I decide I want, uh, there's a progression that happens where that desire begins to grow. And all of a sudden, what is just something that really isn't crucial to life starts to take on a monumental importance in my heart. I need that. I want that. I'm not going to be happy without it. And the more that that desire begins to grow, then all of a sudden that blinding effect happens where I don't look at the downside. I don't look at the effect that that might have on other people. I don't count the cost and understand, wait a minute, this isn't really good. And in that blindness caused by our desire, sin is born when we all of a sudden decide, yeah, I know the Bible warns us about that. I know we shouldn't do that. I know I don't really need this, but we're going to do it anyway. And that's where James says, when sin, when it is fully conceived, gives birth to death. The other thing James says, if you skip ahead a couple chapters to chapter 4, and we looked at this passage a couple weeks ago, but I want to remind you of it again today. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet and you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. And when you ask, you do not receive because with wrong motives, you, you pray with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity to God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. You hear James talking again about that, that wrestling with the desires within us and the, the consequences that unleash in, in our lives. So this is why Jesus came, because we are in bondage to sin and we cannot free ourselves. We need a Savior. We need Jesus to do for us what we could never do for ourselves. So as we hear of the first great threat or enemy in our life, our own sin, we also hear proclaimed God's great answer and great salvation in coming in Jesus to save us by his death on the cross to pay the price for our sins and his resurrection that sets us free and brings us to eternal life. God bless you this day and strength for your battle. Amen.